I get asked a lot, what do I look for when I'm going to the thrift store and how do I turn it into home decor and items for my shop? So I thought today I would do a little mini thrift store haul and then go over what I'm looking for at the thrift store and how I transform it into something that people wanna buy or things to decorate my home. So when I'm at the thrift store, I'm looking for textures, shapes, and what things are made of. If you follow me for any length of time, you know that my design point of view is very farmhouse with a little bit of vintage inspired. And one of the things I'm really seeing trending is woods and whites. So I used to just buy everything and paint it all white. And now I'm looking at things that would accent well with white pieces. I love this wreath with nothing on it just because the texture is so amazing. I know that they have grapevine wreaths at the craft store, but this is a little bit different um, design and it's got like an aged patina to the wood. So I'm actually gonna leave this just like this and put it in my shop because against a white wall or on top of a window, I think it would add an amazing natural element. And for $2, I think it was a great find. I'll mark it at $15 and stick it in my shop. Stay tuned at the end because I'm gonna give you a little tidbit why people buy from me instead of just going straight to the thrift store. Next item is this cool cutting board. It looks like it's handmade, but it also has feet. And I don't know if you've seen the farmhouse bloggers, they always use these and then they put like a vase with flowers on it. It's in pretty rough shape, but if I sand it down and use our real stain on it with some butcher block oil, it'll be good as new. It will also still be food safe if they want to use it as a cutting board. A lot of the vibes that I'm seeing right now is like the farmhouse mixed with the bohemian and the natural and baskets are definitely a way to do that. You don't want to just get like your run-of-the-mill baskets. I'm always looking for interesting textures and shapes. I picked up these two baskets because I really like the shape and they're perfect with a wreath on top. And I already picked up two wreaths at Hobby Lobby that I think would look great on them. Let me show you. Here they are with the wreaths on top. I'll use some wire to fix them to the baskets and then I'll sell them at my shop. This basket here was $1.50 and this basket was a dollar. I got the wreaths half off at Hobby Lobby for $10 each. When I'm pricing things like this particular piece, I price it at the full retail value of the wreath plus what the basket would be worth on its own. So each of these baskets would sell for about $15 and the wreaths are retail valued at $20. So they'll go for $35 all put together at my shop. Last but not least, I've got this really cool metal like trough looking thing. It's not super old um, and it's kind of an unattractive brass. So if you're doing like a mid-century boho vibe, you could probably get away with leaving the brass, which would be great, but that's not in my decorating wheelhouse. So I'm gonna actually take this and I'm gonna give it a chippy white paint job, maybe some dark oil wax, and then I'm gonna go to Hobby Lobby and buy one of their long garlands. It's an inexpensive way to fill a big piece like this without having to buy individual stems. I spent $6 on this and probably when I'm done, it'll be somewhere with the flowers in it in the $49 range, just because it's like an entire centerpiece in one piece. And it's gonna take me a little bit of work to get it painted the way that I want it. All right, so we painted this white and then I used my orbital sander and distressed it, but it's still a little too new looking and that gold coming through is shiny. So my fix for that is I'm using Sweet Pickens Oil Wax. You can tell I've used it a lot. This is just a little sample container. A little bit goes a long way. The nice thing about oil wax is it's softer looking than a glaze, but it's a sealer and a glaze all in one. Sorry, that was loud. And I'm just wiping it on and then I'll wait half an hour and then buff it off and it gives it a good aged patina. This little cutting board has been used for actual cutting. So I'm just gonna sand it down smooth. It's pretty dried out, but it has been oiled a few times. We're gonna give it a fresh start. So I'm gonna sand it, we'll stain it with some real stain, and then just seal it back up with some butcher block mineral oil. I've got this sanded down. I've got real stain number two. And I'm just gonna go over it just lightly. One coat will be enough. This is all natural, food safe. Doesn't have any VOCs, so I don't have to wear a mask or even gloves to use it. It'll get my hands a little dirty, but with uh, soap and water, it washes right off. And that's what that's gonna do. That's just gonna warm that back up. I made it a point to not sand out all of the little cut marks because this had previously been used as a cutting board. We still want it to have that aged look. So what this will do is that'll bring all those out because where that stain settles down in the cuts, it's gonna be darker and you'll see them really well. All right, so you're gonna wanna stay tuned because Zeb is gonna get close-ups of all of these items transformed 
and ready for my retail space. I told you I'd tell you, why do people buy from me instead of just going straight to the thrift store? Sometimes people can't envision what things will be. So if you're buying for a shop, think of the style that you're trying to curate. When people go to my space at Molly's Forget Me Not and they see the Jamie Ray vintage area, they immediately know that they're gonna find well curated items that fit in my design point of view. That's why people come to my shop. If you're looking to resell, think about the things that you love to put in your home and make sure that your shop reflects your personal style. And if you're just decorating for your home, these are some great tips and tricks to get good deals on things without having to pay full retail price. Stay tuned for the pictures. Be sure that you hit that notifications button so you never miss a DIY. Give us a thumbs up, comment below with your favorite thrift store find you've ever found, and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Hey, if you like this video and you have a friend that you think might enjoy my DIY and point of view, be sure to share this video. It's a great way to help us grow our channel so we can create more good content for you.